Hey guys, Joe Hildreth here from MyHeap.com. So I've been doing this series on uh, book binding for the home shop and the next logical step is uh, to show you how to make some uh, wheat paste. Now why would we make the wheat, piece, uh, wheat paste? You, know, you can go to Lowe's or Walmart or just about anywhere and you can buy some wallpaper paste, right? It's, it's not very expensive and it, it will work just as fine. And if you want to do that, feel free to do that. Uh, making it though just costs pennies and, and why not? And uh, today, I've been fortunate enough for my spare rib to let me into her workshop, right? Now, she did say, if it's not cleaned up when I get home, I will beat you to death with some piece, stray piece of cast iron that I might have in there. So, if you never hear from me again, you know that my cleaning skills maybe weren't that good. Alright, so I'm going to bring you in over here and I want to show you uh, what we're going to have to have to make this. And I want to show you a processing step after it's done made. So that when we go to uh, do the next uh, book binding, which will be a, a perfect bound book with cased in with a hard cover or a semi hard cover, um, you will already know how to process the paste. So let me get the uh, camera in here and we'll get started. Okay, so to uh, make wheat glue um, or wheat paste, very, 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 very simple. All you need is some flour. Now, I just uh, grabbed some of my wife's. Uh, King Arthur all-purpose flour. Okay, I don't think the brand or the type of flour means a hill of beans Okay, and you're gonna need some water and that's it So what I've done to speed up some time is I have three tablespoons of flour measured out in this bowl. I Have one cup of hot tap water uh, Measured out in this cup. I have a bowl that I'm going to mix uh, my initial roux in and then, uh, of course, I have a whisk to cook with, and this is an anodized um, pot that we're going to cook it down in. Of course, you'll need some tablespoons, right? Our tablespoon to measure out your flour. So, all this simple stuff, right? And uh, when it's done, to process the uh, wheat paste, you'll want uh, some sort of uh, fine screen mesh, you know, a strainer. You'll want uh, some sort of spatula or something that you can force the paste through the strainer with and of course you'll want something to uh, store it in now <laughs> you know I'm twisted right uh, this is a uh, this is a KFC mashed potato container right or whatever side that came in it but you know wheat paste looks a whole lot like mashed potatoes so maybe I'll have a kid that will make that mistake before I uh, get around to binding the uh, book it'll be fun like any other good cooking show, I do have a, an audience member. My mother-in-law is watching me. Now, I don't know if she's just curious about the YouTube process or if she's uh, being a spy for my wife. I guess we'll find out. Maybe uh, we can do like on the cooking shows, I can get her to sample it, huh? <laughs> oh, yeah, I just got the dirty look. Okay, now, just like any other good cooking show, I remember as a kid, Julia Child, she'd have a little sherry for what she was cooking, a little sherry for herself. Well, we have cooking sherry, which is way too salty to drink, so I had to find something else, and it is before noon, so I thought, what would be more appropriate than some Founders Breakfast Stout, right? I mean, come on. So, no, nah, I'm just kidding. Anyway, let's get started. So, in this bowl, I'm going to put just an, a little bit of water in, and uh, really all I'm interested in doing here is um, mixing my flour in with this water uh, and dissolving it, making what's called a roux, as I think is what the uh, the ladies and gentlemen that can cook call it. And like I said, I only want enough water in here. See, just to just to, oops, make a paste. Well, I better move that, man. Don't tell me, folks. I'm gonna need a little more water. Okay, and I'm just going to mix this in until it's nice and smooth. That's all I'm really interested in. You gotta do it careful or you'll splatter the stuff all over the place. Okay, now once you have your flour uh, dissolved in just enough water to make a nice creamy consistency like that, just set it aside. We're gonna get the pot here. <clears throat> we're not gonna need the lid and we're gonna put our cup of hot water or hot tap water in here and we're going to turn the burner on now this is being anodized aluminum uh, pan I have to be careful how hot I do it and we're going to just put this on the heat and we're going to put our roux in this water 
just like this. Matter of fact, we won't waste any of the goodness, huh? Okay, so now all we're going to do is we're going to stir this as this heats up. We're going to bring this to a boil and then uh, we're just going to let it cook over this heat until, you know, it has the, about the consistency of a gravy. Um, you know, uh, you know, it'll thicken like gravy because this is basically how you make gravy. So I'm going to, instead of making you guys stand here and watch this, I'll, uh, I'll pause the camera here and then I'll bring you back in uh, when it's thickened up. So I'll see you shortly. Okay, so I've had this on the stove top, you know, I've, so I've got sort of medium high heat. It doesn't really matter, well, it does matter how high of a heat you use because if you use too high, you're going to scald it and burn it and you don't want to do that. So um, the best thing to do is just keep, keep moving around. I'm using a whisk here. And uh, when it reaches the consistency of gravy, you see that's thickened, right, just like that, um, we can take it off the heat. Uh, and if I stop stirring here, you'll see that there's a, it, it will simmer. All right, so now the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take this off of the heat, okay? And I'm just gonna move it here to the back of the stove and let me get you up here where you can see, maybe. And right there, okay? And I'm just going to uh, <clears throat> mix on this to uh, until it cools down um, cool enough that I can put it in my, my plastic container and then I'll put it in the fridge to let it chill. Now, uh, essentially, the paste is done at this point. You'll want to let it uh, cool down. Um, now, you know, it would only last a couple weeks or so in the refrigerator because remember, it is, it's a food product. Um, so while there's any moisture in it, you know, it's liable to, it, to spoil. Now, you can preserve it a little longer if you put in a, a couple drops of clove oil. I don't have any of that. And usually when I'm done with it, I just pitch it out. I mean, what am I out? A cup of water and three tablespoons of flour, right? No big deal. So I will uh, continue stirring this till it cools down enough to put in the container. And uh, once I put it in the container, I'll, I'll uh, uh, put it in the fridge and let it cool. So let's, uh, let me take care of that and I'll bring you back in when we get to that point. Okay, so I've had this off the heat and I've been stirring it until it's cool enough to go, whoops, sorry about that, until it's cool enough to go into my plastic container. So you see it. It looks like gravy, a thick gravy, and the cooler it gets, the more it will thicken up. So at this point, I'm just going to move this back here, and I got my little bowl. Let me take, uh-oh, see that? My wife is going to beat me to death if I keep getting stuff all over the place. All right, so I'm going to take that out, and I'll just take my spatula here, just to make sure everything's in frame, and I'm just going to put this in this bowl. So you see the consistency there, maybe? Okay, now as this uh, goes in the fridge and cools down even further to get thicker, okay, which is what we want for the book binding. Okay, that was simple. All right, so there's my paste. From start to finish, it took about, oh, 20 minutes, really. Uh, it didn't take long. It took longer to heat the water up and get it cooked down on the stove than anything didn't take any time at all really for it to cool down, um, but it's good to go. I'm going to put that in the fridge. Now that will just uh, stay in the fridge until I'm ready to uh, bind the book. But now before I bind the book, I want to process this paste a little bit. So what I want to do now is I want to put it in the fridge and I want to let it cool down. And then I'm going to come back and I'm going to show you how I process this in this video so that when we do the book binding video, you'll know what I've done. So. All right, well, let me uh, get this cooled down, chilled down, and I'll catch you back here in just a minute. Okay, so I've just taken the paste out of the refrigerator, and if we open this up, it doesn't look exactly like um, KFC mashed potatoes, but eh, it's okay. But we do notice that it's pretty gelatinous, right? So, uh, hey, what's this? My kitchen, my rules, and a meat tenderizer. I wonder what she's trying to say to me. Well, anyway, I, I digress. So, um, at this point, you know, this would just stay in the refrigerator until we're ready to use it. But when we're ready to use it, it's difficult to brush paste like this. So, what we want to do is we want to sort of mush it and fluff it up. 
And the easiest way to do that is by using uh, a sifter. And this is just a fine screen mesh sifter and then a spoon or something to, to work the stuff down in there. Um, I don't know what that is. I got something in there just because this is clean when I started, I know. All right, anyway, um, so here's what we're going to do. I want to take and scoop this stuff out just like this. Mmm, yummy. Doesn't that look good? You know this stuff is biodegradable. If you don't believe me, you can eat a cup of this and tomorrow you'll know that it's biodegradable. Trust me. Alright, so I'm just going to take my wheat paste here and I'm just going to stuff it in this. Right? Okay, and hopefully all this is in frame. And I'm just going to take and I'm just pushing the wheat paste through the screen. Okay, I'm just going to work it through there like so over my bowl. Right, so you see this is smooth, it's a little creamier, right? And so what I'll do is I'll do this a couple of times, right? Um, mush the uh, wheat paste through the screen in order to, uh, see that's all mushed through there and sitting on this side of the screen, right? Just like that. Now it's still gelatinous, right? Which is what we want, but it's creamier. So I'm just gonna take that again Put it in the screen, just like that. And again, I'm just going to mash it through the screen. So this is all I'm going to do to prep the paste to use it for when I bind the book. This way, when I stick my brush in it and I go to brush it out, it's nice and smooth. You see, it's nice and smooth, creamy, and the uh, really the finer the mesh, the more you know smooth it will make the glue all right so you see that's all mashed in there and so i'm just going to take this here and scoop this off all right that's that so that glue is ready to be used on a book it's nice and creamy it's going to be brushable and usable and that's what we're looking for so anyway so when i go to uh do the next book um, I'll do that again. I'll uh, run it through the uh, through the uh, sif sifter again, just to make sure everything's nice and creamy. But this is going to go back in the fridge until the uh, until the uh, next video when we uh, do a hard hard cased in book. So let me uh, reposition the camera. I got a couple things to say, and um, then uh, we're going to get out of here. Well, there you have it, guys. Making wheat paste just it's not rocket science. Pretty easy and. And you know, I really tease my wife a whole lot, but I tell you what, she uh, has, has always been very, very supportive of uh, the crazy antics uh, that I try to do. And, and so, honey, thank you for letting me use your workshop. I know that you really don't like people in here, if, uh, especially if you're cooking. And uh, after tasting my own uh, wheat paste gravy, oh, I think I'm just going to let you cook because, well, I'm, I don't know, I might get skinny if I started cooking. Well, never mind. Anyway, <laughs> so hey, look, if these uh, videos are helpful or are or, or entertaining or something like that, please consider liking, subscribing, and sharing. Um, subscribers are always welcome. So, other than that, have a blessed day.